Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Wow, look at that. Excellent connection. It's a small miracle. All right, everything else seems to be running really slow, though. I'm trying this new uh, streaming studio that YouTube has. Let's see if I can stand it. All right, so what's up with you guys? Who's in? Maybe it's Mandela, drop by, Janice Windsor, David Cook, Unimatrix 001. Scroll so slowly. Miss Imaginary, Jenny Turner, Mandela 108, STS Aquatic, Morpheus Dreams of Sleep, do, 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 Kukuk Monty. I think that's everybody. Look at how slow it's slow. It scrolls. Do, do, do. It doesn't jump though, so I like that. Michael Fontaine's in, Heart's Truth, John Austin. Cirrus Rex, Shari D, who had a weird week. I don't know. It's every time you think you had a weird week, next week gets weirder. Consciousness of Steel, Moon Little. Okay, you already know. Space River News, Loretta Hewitt, Jumping Ship. Mm, a lot of people in. It was real slow for a while. I did get my um, notifications up a little earlier, so that might have helped. Plus, this co the C thing has been going on for a while, so I think people are settling down a little bit. JoJo's, Bill White, I think that's everybody. Glowings, Glowings M.E., Helen Skygazer, Chanty Moody, Leia Broadweather, Broadwater, Jay Emlyn. It's so distracting seeing myself there from the past. All right. So, what's going on? What's going on with you guys? Hope everything's all right. As usual, I'm going to, well, it has been usual for the last few weeks. I'm going to start with the world news of the, the big C first. And if you don't want to hear about that stuff, then just scroll forward on the screen. I mean, obviously, people that are live have no choice, but most people watch it on the review. So, first half is about the C. I just want to go over a couple things. This one kind of hit like a big, it hit, what, yesterday? Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing because it just like smells like copyright web page is slowing. Of course, a web page is slowing it down. Uh, but basically there was this hot mic on Fox news where, uh, these two people who are apparently reporters or something, I mean, they're not any high ranking people. Uh, this guy stroll a guy strolls in and he says, Oh, you can take off this, that mask because, uh, such and such study shows that the C death rate is not that much and blah, blah, blah. And then this guy here jokes, ha ha, we're all vaccinated anyway. And um, look at it, so slow. And so then, of course, everybody's, what do you mean? The, the thing that was weird is when he said, ha ha, we're all vaccinated anyway, he actually didn't say, ha ha, we're all vaccinated. He just said, oh, well, it doesn't matter, we're all vaccinated. And he said it totally like normal, not like it was a joke at all. And uh, so, of course, that stirs up a bunch of conspiracy theory. What, is, what do you mean they're all vaccinated? There's no vaccine for the C. And uh, then this is Snopes. And uh, Snopes has never been so obviously, ridiculously um, biased as it is now. I mean, people used to always say Snopes was untrustworthy, but, of course, now it won't even load. Really? That's, uh, that's um, reassuring. Uh, Everybody here has been vaccinated anyway. But it, it's just bad now because it says, oh, this is misleading. I, I'm not sure exactly what's misleading about it. Um, oh, it, it, one thing that was on here at the end is the guy goes, oh, so it was all a hoax. Okay. I suggest that you guys actually watch this. I don't want to run it because I'm afraid I'm going to get um, copyright infringed. But now I'm trying to turn it off and I can't. Stop. There. I'll just, like, scroll it away. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Are they saying anything? Of course they are, and I can't turn it off. All right, I'm just going to save it and then delete it. So it's a hoax. Hopefully that made it stop. I better not get copyrighted. I didn't even Everybody here has been vaccinated anyway. Now I'm going to be mad. <laughs> They're out to get me, I'm telling you. All right, I'm going to try again here. I may regret this. Snopes might be what's slowing down the computer. Do, do, do. 
I clicked on it to expand it. I had no intention of playing the dang thing. Let's see if I still have my stream over here. You know, I, I rebooted the computer. I uh, rebooted the modem. Okay, well, here's the thing. In my old timeline, Snow Snopes, you may not be sure, but they weren't obviously lying. Like, it wasn't like smack you in the face baloney. Um, in the last couple weeks, it's just ridiculously, obviously fake in a way that I can figure out they're lying within minutes. Okay, so that's, that's something different for me. Okay, so was Fox News John Roberts caught on hot mic discussing, discussing the sea as a hoax? Um, mis now they say, oh, it's misleading. Well, yeah, he was on there discussing uh, the sea as a hoax. He exactly was. If you look at the video, he, he was. Um, they're saying he was just joking, but there's no indication whatsoever that he was joking. Uh, but if you actually watch the, the video, it really looks kind of hoax. You should be able to find it. There, it's everywhere. Um, so um, if you, it, just, it kind of looks like a movie set. I mean, it just looks like they had it all planned. I, I just don't think this is an accident. Um, so, but I'm going to go over what they looked at. But the, the weird thing is that they say it's, it's a hoax and uh, that it's misleading title, but it's not. He really did say all that. And if you look at the video, uh, it totally looks like he said all that. Okay, another thing I'm going to cover that is really creepy-tastic to me, um, in this same Snopes article down here, they go, Roberts asked the White House's uh, C response coordinator, Dr. Deborah Burks, about this study during the press conference. And the reason I suggest you to go to Snopes.com and look at this hot mic Fox News C thing is just check out this snippet after what I'm going to tell you because I'm going to go over this um, study in a very easy to understand way. And I'm not going to play this, but I'm going to tell you what uh, this White House person says standing right next to Trump as the official White House spokesperson for the C is after... Um, Somebody in the audience, a news person, asks. She goes on and she says, so basically what I'm going to show you is that the, according to two different studies, the death rate of the C is about 0.2.3%, which is a little bit worse than the flu, and that's it, okay? Um, so these studies show that, like, say, approximately 5% of L.A. has already had the C. And because of that, if you count all the deaths, there's not that many of them compared to how many have really had it. So what does that mean? It means it's like a nasty flu, okay? But when asked on this study, which it obviously is a nasty flu, this woman, um, God, I hate to click on it because I won't be able to stop it. She basically goes on and goes, she totally ignores the fact she just kind of glosses over really quick. Well, yeah, maybe the death rate's lower, but... And then she goes on for like 15 minutes or seemingly like that long saying how this just goes to show that it is a very contagious disease and there's all these asymptomatic people and if we're going to get this under control, we have to do more sentinel testing, which I guess means just testing random people, but I, I'm kind of weirded out about how much they're pushing that and so she just goes on and on and pushes how we have to do more testing because all of these asymptomatic people are dangerous and they're spreading the virus and blah 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 and she totally ignores the fact that if it's just like a nasty flu why do we even care that much i mean it's it's just ridiculous the whole thing is ridiculous she just to i mean like it's just so obvious to anybody, you don't have to even have a medical background, that if the death rate is close to flu, then we probably should not shut down the entire country. And she completely ignores that. All right, so, boink. Oh, something is totally killing my computer. I was hoping it was that one. But look. Argh. It's probably this. Come on, come on. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete all of these because those aren't as important. I think I can find them again later. And I think that those are the ones that are killing my computer. You. 
I'm going to regret it, though, because one of those was hard to find. All right. See, I try to get all these up, set up, but I can't put too many of these weird, um, these weird uh, websites on because there's so much advertising, and then after you put like five or six on your computer, it just starts crashing. All right, let us go look. Hopefully, I have now cleaned up the problem childs here. Here we go. Okay, so here is the study in question that uh, they are talking about over there. So this one just came out uh, April 20th. And so what they did was they've got this new antibody test. Even just assuming that the antibody test is accurate, it's supposed to test for who had the C, uh, but um, isn't showing any symptoms or may not know. Now, there's been two different studies on this. Uh, one was at uh, in Santa Clara, and one was at, in Los Angeles. This one is kind of vague about how they um, picked their um, people out. Um, they said that they tried to get it to be representative of the populace, but they're a little vague, so it kind of makes it hard to f know for sure if the people were totally representative. But there's been two studies now, and they both came up with the same general results, so that's very interesting. Okay. So basically what they're saying is they, they tested um, what they say is representative sampling of Los Angeles County. And they found out that um, approximately 4% of the population has an antibody to, to the C. So approximately 40% of the people had it. Um, so with margin of error, that becomes like 2.8% to 5.6%. Um, so then they're guesstimating using that range that about 221,000 to 442,000 adults in the county already were infected with the C. Uh, so then, okay, how many people died from the C in, um, it was like in, in Los Angeles County was about 600 when this was published. Okay. Okay, so 600 out of 221,000. Let's just take this low number here. I had actually looked up the deaths and I didn't realize they were already on there. So I'm going to um, delete that page because I don't need it. I'm going to go. So it's going to be, let's say it's 650. And then we'll do 650 divided by 221,000. So I'm going to just show you really quick um, how, how to do that. All right. So say it was 10 out of 100, that would be 10%, right? So I'm just going to show you how it works kind of 10. Oh, great, Mikey. Okay. 10 out of 100, because we know 10 out of 100 is 10%, or like most of us that are sort of slightly good. Out of 100 people. Ugh, this thing is running slow. Everything is running slow. It won't let me. There, all right. 10 out of uh, No, no. 10 out of 100 equals. So we know the answer is 10%. So when you get the answer, you move the decimal place over. 0.1 is 10%. So if I move the decimal point over two decimal points, that's 10%. 0.1 is 10%. All right, so now let's do it for that study. So we'll say 650. 650 divided by their low guesstimate of how many people may have already had the C. 221,000. All right. Then remember, we'll move the decimal place over two to get the percent at the end. All right. So that would be 0.2%. Well, we round up, it's close to 0.3. Move the decimal plane over, over twice, it's 0.2, about 0.3%. That's their low range. 0.3% death rate. And, and remember, most of the people who died were already fairly ill. All right, so then we'll just say, say it's 650 people who have died at the high range, which is, I believe it was 440, 440,000. I just want to show you guys that this is what this, the death rate that this latest study predicts. Doink, doink, doink. Now it's about 0.15% at the high range. So that guy that was um, talking, that reporter was about right. It's like 0.1 to 0.3%. Uh, so the death rate for the flu, the annual flu is supposed to be about 0.1 to 0.2%. Uh, 
All right, so this puts it in the range of the flu, maybe a little worse, we're not sure. It even could be less than, you know, it, it even might be slightly less than the flu, we don't know. Uh, 0.3 is a little higher than the suspected death rate for the flu, but 0.14 is, you know, right in the same range. So it could be slightly worse or it could be the same as the flu, according to that study. Dum, dum, dum. That's the UCL, UCLA County study. All right, so there was another study. Um, oh, when did that one actually come out? Let me see when that one came out. Dum, dum, dum. April 17th. Okay, this one got panned because they, they had volunteers. Um, they, they asked volunteers to get tested for the uh, antibodies. And this was in Santa Clara County, which is further north in California. I mean, far enough away that... Um, that uh, it's not going to overlap with L.A. because California is pretty big. So L.A. now is a hot spot. So we kind of expect there to be more people who had uh, the C in L.A. than we do in Santa Clara, which has not had nearly as many deaths or supposed cases. Also keep in mind that, you know, they seem like they're really padding the C re cases really bad um, with just like everybody and their uncle, even not tested, being labeled positive. So that could easily make the 0.3% much lower than uh, it really is. That would make it more like just basically the flu. All right, so this, this study in Santa Clara, let's see, I had this pulled up somewhere. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, so they're saying about 1.5% to 2.8% in Santa Clara probably already had the C. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, so that range between 48,000 and 81,000 people in Santa Clara. How many people died in Santa Clara County? Santa Clara County is actually fairly big. Um, deaths, 88. Okay, so 88 out of, what did I just say? I don't have this one as memorized as well as the other one. Dun, 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 dun. 88 out of... 48,000. So let's go to the online calculator. 88 divided by 48,000. So, whoops, I think we need to take one off. All right, so what's, and then remember, we'll move the decimal place over uh, two places to get the percent. All right, so here we have 0.1833. So basically, Almost 0.2% would be the low end. Again, that's kind of in the range of the flu. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And then at the high end is 81,000. So let's do that. 88. 88. Divide by what was it again? Short memory. 81,000. 81. All right, so that would put it at 1%. So the Santa Clara study puts it at right around the same as the flu. And remember that they are padding, as far as we can tell, they're padding the numbers pretty bad. So yes, uh, these studies both suggest that the death rate is similar to flu. One of them suggests it might be a little higher. I think with all the numbers padding that they're doing that uh, it's safely right in line with the flu. Of course, now this is false information, even though it's true math doing a true study. And everything is absolutely as kosher as I can make it. Uh, it's funny you're talking about RSV. You know, that thing is, is really interesting because RSV... Unimatrix001 gave me two bucks. Thank you very much. And uh, ooh, there's two of them. Thank you. Dum -dum. I think three. Very nice. All right, see, um, I was tired the whole week without any reason. I was really pooped out this week, too. At first, I just thought I was working too hard, but then I kind of dialed it back a little, and I didn't recover. I was just tired tired for no reason that vid seems so convenient it's like a script exactly it's just like i don't know i thought that video was really suspicious 
He was very calm and serious sounding when he said that, yeah, about the vaccines. Yeah, he very much. Snopes is not trustworthy. See, what's weird about that? It's like they put it out to just stir. I mean, like the reality put it out. They, I don't even know who they are. I mean, is there really a they? It's like it's out there just to stir the pot. But from what I can tell with these studies, it is accurate according to those studies. Now, you can't really trust anything anymore, but you've got two studies that say basically the same. They're going to crack down more on the C info. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I mean, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there, and then if I lose the channel or I lose the video, then I lose the channel or I lose the video. But you guys, you know, you can look up these studies really easily, and you can spread it. Um, and if I lose the channel, I'll just get another channel somewhere. And if I don't, then I'll just keep trundling on. Yeah, that guy tweeted the study he talked about after that video was, quote, leaked. Um, yeah, I don't know. The study was, seems like it was out, so I'm not sure on that one. Even my dad think, said he thinks it's been planned. Everyone else are beginning to question this. Yeah, with those two studies, though, I mean, like, look at it. it it's, it's the same. But then that woman for the White House goes on, and she just keeps talking about, um, yeah, it was weird. She just, I mean, come on, I'm, I'm like... Some girl in five minutes with a decent math skills could find that out in, in minutes, you know, I mean, just by looking at the study and crunching the numbers. And so there's just no way that um, anybody with any kind of health knowledge couldn't figure that out very quickly. I looked up the New England Medical Journal for Dr. Anthony Fauci. I, I got to figure out how to say his name. I actually read most of my news. I don't watch a lot of videos, so I often say these names wrong. And his published paper says 0.1% fatality rates. Yeah, see? See, it's just so obviously ridiculous. I really just feel like reality is trolling people. Like, let's just how see how stupid we can be. Like, I mean, wouldn't they just... Um, not let these pu these studies even be published if they really wanted to keep this a secret would it be so hard to just uh have that guy fired and his his study taken down but no instead there's a a hot mic leak just so everybody who didn't know about the study now knows about the study and the guy has to drop the words uh, vaccination and hoax in there um, you know, just in minutes, just like these key words that are going to cause all the conspiracy people to go completely nuclear. Um, so, and they kept it nice and short in case anybody has a short attention span. So I just, it just can't be random. I just can't see how that's just, oops, it slipped. Oh, it was a hot mic. I mean, it just, I don't get, I don't, I don't, the info is leaking out. It's like it's slapping people in the face. Anybody can do that math, you know. I, I know only 1% of people will bother, and I haven't seen anybody actually do the math. But, you know, come on, you guys can do it. <laughs> you can do the math. I did it for you. What is the current Earth population? No, that's a good question. Uh, remind me again later when we're on to a Mandela's what the current Earth population is. Remind me to look it up. What, there's 9 billion people on Earth? Are you serious? All right, I'm looking right now. <sighs> Look what you made me do. Okay, the serum one, we did that one. I'm getting rid of that one. That was, um, uh, what was it last time? I think it was just over 7,000 last I looked. For the longest time, it was 6, 7 something, and then it kept, bouncing back it, I, I you've heard me talk about that Look at this there's nothing open and it still sucks all right mm -mm -mm. look at this the most irritating thing in the world is when my computer will not take the speed of my own that makes me crazy Dum, 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 dum. Anyway, 
Let's see if this video is still up. Let me know if my live stream collapses and they cut it off. I'm a little bit worried because I played that little bit of video. All right, no smooth streaming, but I still have streaming. Now 7.8, which is the Olman, old Schumann residence. Okay, now 7.8. 7.8, that seems pretty high compared to last time I looked. Yeah, look at that. 7.8. 81 million a year. Come on, load. Look at everything is loading so slow. I wonder if it's this new studio making my computer run this slow. This actually is very receptive, but then the whole rest of my computer is like a snail. 7.8. So would they say 8 million a year? Is that what it said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the growth rate? Growth rate has dropped, but what is the rate? Annual growth rate, we should, 2%. All right, so the growth rate is supposed to be at 2%. So 1%. All right, so 1,000, oh, yeah, okay. Actually, it seems about right from last time I looked that we earned, we gained that many. For years, though, I was watching this for like the first two years I knew of the ME, and it would be like six, it was like six, seven, six point seven, then it would make up to 6.8, and then it would be back to like 6.6 6 something, and then it would be 6.7 something. Okay, so we actually did um, jump. This actually could be in line with the last time I looked, 7.8. I'll have to check into that more, but I think that is, uh, there hasn't been any resets, any obvious resets for me since last time I looked. Yeah, kind of interesting. Doink. Yeah, see, when it was 6B, it just kept reset resetting for me for years. It would just jump back and then go forward. A lot of people don't go to the doctor unless they're near death because they don't want health. That was me for a long time, but um, the other reason I don't go to the doctor all the time is because they never fixed anything that was wrong with me when I went. Other than like stitches, if I had a big cut, they're good at stitches. Um, you know, I felt, if I felt sick or bad or had any serious problems, they never were able to help it. And I always had to um, just go online and research and try things. And uh, I always had to fix it myself because the doctors were useless. I think they're great at like, if you have tra traumatic injury, like bone damage, like broken bones or, or bleeding, they can stitch up the the cuts, they can close the bleeds, they can straighten your bones and put them in a cast. But stuff past that, I just, uh, I mean, if I guess if you have a, a real cancer, they could cut it out, but they don't really, they don't, I haven't had cancer and I haven't had anything that could be cut out other than stitches, so... You know, it all started when I was a kid. I, I used to get these um, ear infections, and they would, they're like, oh, you have to take these, these pills, and they were huge pills, and I could never swallow them. I wasn't good at swallowing pills when I was a kid, and so I used to um, flush them down the toilet because I, I tell my mom I can't swallow these pills. They're too big. Instead of, like, cutting them or helping me or in a way, she just goes, you have to, and then I'm like, well, I can't. She goes, it doesn't matter. You have to, so I just would throw them out 
And then I would go back to the doctor and they go, oh, well, I'm glad you took your antibiotic because you're, you're, it's all better now. And so that's like, hmm, you just wait and it gets better anyway. So that's, uh, that was my first experience with uh, the doctors that I thought the first time this happened, I was so scared. I'm like, he's going to know I didn't take my antibiotics and he's going to be mad and he's going to tell my mom and she's going to yell at me. But no, he's all, good job. You're all better. And I'm like, dope. That was the, the, the moment when I realized they aren't all knowing. Okay, so got that. Got the study. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk about some weird stuff. Uh, this is just weird media stuff. I don't even know how to describe it exactly. But um, look at this. Look at how slow. I can't even open a new window. Come on. Look at... Uh, 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 uh. Come on. You know, pushing the button like 15 times is probably not a good idea. Look at now I've got all these stupid windows. Unlike pushing the elevator button 20 times, pushing the new tab window button 20 times is not recommended. Come on. Look, it's totally jammed. I wonder if it's this this new YouTube studio thing. Look, it's totally jammed. It won't let me write anything. Arr. Dum, 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 dum. Yes, it's an exciting show. This is way too many problems to be having after rebooting everything earlier and having it work perfectly. Sometimes just starting tax mon manager will bust it out of its problem. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe. Task manager is not responding. It's not a good sign. I might have to just shut down Firefox and restart it. I'm going to try that. If the problem is on YouTube Studios, then I should be able to get back in. Derp, derp, derp. All right, I'm going to shut down Firefox and see if I can get back on. because everything else is jammed. All right, let's try that. All right, that looks good. I'm going to put off the uh, Firefox updates for 100 years. I'll just, every time I do an update and then I can't find anything and something doesn't work right. All right. How's that for a positive attitude? There. Wait. That came back. Not now. All right. Let's see if I can get off of... The problem is, is pretty soon I won't have the classic YouTube Studio option left. And I'll be stuck with this one. And if it jams my computer, that is going to be very irritating. All right, now somewhere on here, there was an option to go back to the old ways. Stream now classic. OK. 
cancel, not that. Not that. I'm positive there was a way. Doesn't look good though. I, I don't think I remember how to do it. They keep changing it, so. Mm, all right, I'm just going to trundle forth and hope that it will allow me to function for the rest of it. Let's try that again. All right, so of course we, we see all day long how um, everybody's dying of the sea and all these nurses, wah, it's so busy. Then a bunch of other nurses saying, no, we're slow as molasses. Who do you believe? All right, this one's interesting. Uh, Facebook, uh, okay, this mom, basically the story here is supposedly that this mother uh, put a picture of her family up, which is right here, uh, many years ago on Facebook. And somehow some uh, company uh, grabbed that family photo and said, all these people died from the sea and this is what could happen to you and blah, 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 blah. And then apparently uh, somebody that knew her saw that and, and word spread rapidly and everybody was running to her Facebook going, oh my God, I heard you all died and blah, blah, blah. And so she flipped out and... So supposedly it was just like a, a company that was trying to advertise stuff just grabbed her, her image there and um, of her whole family and said they all died. Of course, it's all scary because they're all young, so young parents and you know teen kids and stuff. Okay, so basically, don't believe everything you hear. But of course, this was just an advertising. So what about mainstream media? This is one that I was deleting late earlier. All right, so this is politifact.com. It's basically the same as Snopes. Uh, all I noticed that these all just tout the same party line. I just wonder if it's, you know, Snopes writes them up and then all the others copy them or they, the official word comes down. Okay, so there's a boy, 13, who apparently died, and uh, his image was put up um, and... Then, apparently he died three more times. Are they even going to show it this time? They, his exact image was basically posted three different times, having died three different ways. And one of them, it was uh, that he was the youngest, the, he was the youngest boy in the UK, uh, boy 13, died of the sea. And so somebody, I guess, did a back search for that image and found that he died three other times, at least that image, supposedly. Now, this is what's interesting is PolitiFact makes it sound like um, the, that the social media is the ones that doctored these images. Uh, so um, same little boy died of the sea in three different countries, still don't believe the media is fake news. Doctored images. Now, here's the thing. People are sharing doctored images of a child in an apparent attempt to cast doubt on the sea. Um, the post, which contains three screenshots of what appear to be, what appear to be portions of three different news reports. I'll tell you right now, they are, in fact, legitimate portions of news reports. Was flagged as part of Facebook's effort to combat false news and misinformation on newsfeed. 
All right. They make it sound like the social media person doctored these images, but I checked last week when this when I first heard of this, and I heard it on uh, Brian Stavely's channel. He actually just mentioned it in passing. The oh that that boy that died three times in three countries, and I googled it and I found it, and then I actually looked for the uh, different deaths, and I found all three of them last week. But you can't so easily find them. But um. Let's see. I think this is the first one. So this is the magic image right here that you will see over and over. Um, dum -dum. Let's see if this is the blue whale one. All right, this is one of the fake ones, I think. I think this is the second one he died. Um, in one of them, he was found dead in like the yard. In another one, um, he died. This image was uh, attributed to a boy who died doing some kind of internet blue whale suicide thing. Um, but it's the same image. So I'm like, how many times does this kid die? The thing is that this, this legitimately, so in the Irish Times said he died here. I'm going to see if I can find that one I found early. Dum, dum, dum. And then they said it was um, Isaiah Gonzalez. Now, the thing with the one where they... Um, all right, so, okay, Isaiah Gonzalez is the one where um, he... All right, so he's Wilmot over there. Let me see if this one shows Isaiah Gonzalez in it because I'm not sure. I pulled these up earlier, but. But see, what's what's suspicious is that it it is, are we even gonna get that one? Oh, you know what? Uh, let me just reload it there. Because if I go to the Washington Post, it's gonna be login only. Da, da, da. find my original scribblings because if I have the exact <clears throat> hold on just a sec Let me see if I can find this one. 13. This was the title of the one I found last week, and it, it's gone now. They flipped out the photo, but it was that identical photo of him in that brown sweater thing. And it was written by Amelia Clark, and it was on MSN.com, Microsoft Network. So that was a ma mainstream network. But this article of, um, by Amelia Clark is still flopping around. I believe I saw it. Um, so the one by Amelia Clark, that article that was on MSN, most of the mainstream media has now swapped out the photo for some kind of bland photo so that you don't see it on there. I should probably just do an image search.
I'm going to read you guys while that one thinks about loading. The doctored images of C-19 victims, fake stories of deaths, are the same sort of things that were happening with the official story of the Sandy Hook school shooting. Yeah, I wish I paid more attention, actually, then. Boston bombing. I know there's been, like, with every one of these things, there's more and more ridiculousness to it. There's more and more uh, crazy coincidences. There's too much evidence left behind that if it was really just an ordinary plot to fool you, I just don't think that they would... Um, leave that much behind i'm saving files on thumb drive so that it can't be scrubbed yeah the me can get everything though <laughs> they should vet the ads at the very they're not doing it but it's even worse because a lot of what they're saying is just so ridiculous it goes against even the the online research i'm going to cover that a little more it's just ridiculous i mean we've got we've got this two studies here basically showing that um, the death rate is close to flu, maybe just a little bit more or maybe the same. And then what do we have on the news is just people going on and on about how we're all going to die. So, all right, here, here's the image. I believe that this was, okay, so recognize that image. This is another one, and this is, see, this is from that article from Amelia Clark, and this was on the, on the front of it. I'm so glad I wrote down the author. There's, there's vestiges of this article. Now, when I first found that photo, I just typed in that exact um, title of the article, and I just scrolled in the image files, and I found it right away, but it's gone now. And I even looked for articles on MSN that is anything related to it, and it's gone. I think they've just deleted the entire article off of MSN. But you can see vestiges of uh, the Amelia Clark article here. Boy 13 becomes youngest in UK to die from COVID. All right, that is the original article by Amelia Clark, 4-1-2020. There's his photo provided by independent media. Picture, see virus, update. All right, so that is showing me, see if I can make it any larger. This is the, the original one, not any larger. And that was provided by independent media. That was not to buy, provided by some social media, um, Facebook posters, random dude a Now you can see you can't find it anymore, but when I click on there, weird things happen. If this is the right one, I... It doesn't really load right. Uh, I don't know why, If maybe that's why it's still there. I don't know what PINAC media, it sounds like it might be like some kind of Phil Philippines media, like the slowest in, in the West for fixing their problems. But that was the one, it was by this Amelia Clark woman and it was everywhere. So basically he died three times um, I don't know if they just needed a picture of a boy and so they did a quick Google search for 13-year-old boys and just stole uh, this this image. But they did it twice then. They they did it once for uh, the blue whale thing and then once for the sea. And Now, what I don't get is, okay, you saw that that one family found out that her, her, her photo, her family was supposedly dead and it, it, it swung back at them. How can they post a fake picture of this UK boy and it not get back to the family and them have go nuclear over it? I mean, if they're doing this all the time and there's really a family there, oh, I wonder if they fixed it already because last time it showed up here. Oh, now it's a fake news story. Interesting. All right, so now they're just calling it fake news. All right, let me go back and see if I can find that other thing. That's interesting. I just looked at it earlier. All right, that's the one I just looked at. I may not be able to find it now. I had something a little bit earlier, but um, you saw my computer was dying. Dang it. 
Well, anyway, I guess you're just going to have to take my word for it. But I did find that on MSN, that exact image. And you can see he died also from blue whale. I'm just going to click on this one in case that's the one. He also died from blue whale challenge. So it wasn't just the sea that they're using his image for. This is like the second time that his image has been used. Okay, here we go. This is the weird one. This is the one. Somehow it ended up on here. Boy 13 becomes youngest in UK to die from the sea. I don't know what 411nba.com is. But you can see this is the same article by Amelia Clark as the other ones. And this is not um, this is not like trying to prove it's a hoax or anything. It's just uh, a regular article. The youngest sufferer to die from the recognized with the C within the UK, believed to be 13 old boy. This is the article here, and then they're calling him Is Ismail Mohammed Abdul Wahab. In this, that's his new name. You can see that the image is is that same kid, although you can't see his shirt. I don't know, maybe they did a quick image search and uh, the bot could not find it because he didn't have his brown shirt on. But that's him again. It's the identical photo. So it's not even that you can argue that it's two kids that look the same because it's the identical photo. This seems to be the only one left. But um, you can see that it's mainstream media. It's not uh, it, that, that YouTuber or, or that Facebook person is not the one who pulled that. And they had to know. It's ridiculous. This one will probably be gone soon. It kind of reminds me of the Mandela. Um, it's a partial photo, and somehow it didn't, it didn't get scrubbed with the other photos. And I guess MSN is the slowest in the West because they're the only um, one that was like a really mainstream one that still had the image up when I checked last week. All right, so... Blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to pull this one up that kind of shows you all the images. So basically what I'm going to show you, if this is the same one, I think it is. And yay, I can tie full speed again. <sighs> of course, I did it at the wrong place. Go back. I want it here. Oye News, that's it. All right, so there's the image, the brown sweater. All right, so this kind of shows the three... Um, I believe that's the first one. Yeah, 2017. Then he became Isaiah Gonzalez, and he died of, of the Blue Whale Challenge in uh, a little bit later. And then, um, oh, wait, this is the Wilmot. Connor Wilmot died of the Blue Whale Challenge. And then Isaiah Gonzalez died of COVID of C19. And you can see that is the exact same image, and it's the same image I showed you. Um, uh, that one author. Dum, dum, dum. So he has three names. So I don't know, you know, you can argue that they're just grabbing three different photos. Uh, they're just grabbing random photos online. But again, I just can't see them doing this over and over again without us hearing more angry families saying, wait, that's not the picture of my kid and uh, having a giant cow. And then the original paper, uh, the original... Uh, parents of the kids should also be having giant cows. It should just happen all the time then if they're grabbing these images all the time. However, uh, if some of these families don't exist or um, like if the, the UK family doesn't exist and these people are in a whole other country and don't even speak the language, then they might not ever know about it. Um, but I just don't see how they're going to run an image of this kid in the UK who supposedly died and not have, if he has an original family, if there really is a... Connor Wilmot, they should have a giant cow. And yet we never hear of that. So that makes you wonder if the whole rest of the story is fake also. All right. That's that section. Uh, 
All right, a little chunk of fear porn. Keep in mind, most of this scary stuff never actually happens, so. Uh, but. And I think that's going to be even more so nowadays. I wonder sometimes if by posting these things, angry people may even make it come to the reverse. I do sometimes. It's like saying uh, some animals are almost extinct and then next year there's like a gajillion more of them. It seems like that's how the manned animals come into, into this reality. So sometimes I wonder if these actually uh, split the timeline a little bit. Posting anti-vaccine propaganda on social media could become criminal offense, law commissioner says. I believe this is in the UK. New law commissioner Benny Lewis is leading wide-ranging review into whether UK's offense and abuse laws are fit for the social media age. So she's basically saying that if you post anti-vaccine propaganda on social media, um, she's thinking maybe it should be a criminal offense. And of course, they decide what the propaganda is, and it's anything that's not the party line. But, you know, I really wonder about these things. Are we going to have a split timeline here where people who like this go off into the timeline where it becomes true, and then the people who don't like it um, actually push off and make go in the opposite direction? Uh, that's one thing I really wonder about. Um, for, like, most of the... If you look at animals becoming extinct, there's probably a not a pe lot of people who go, oh, I hope those animals just die and go off into a timeline when they're all miserable. I mean, maybe some really depressed people just want that misery. But for something like this, though, I mean, there may be some people who go, yeah, those people shouldn't be allowed to post that. And, and maybe that they'll go off to their timeline where it becomes true. But I really wonder how much we pick our timelines with this. It, it's forcing you to kind of have an opinion and opinions have gotten so split now they're so split uh, i just wonder if it's like giant wedges in in directions here with this kind of thing uh, some of us are going to read this and go this is a hundred percent wrong and it, as much as i don't like baloney on the internet i'd rather have at least have free speech and and then other people are going to be like just the reverse oh you know we got to shut up all those people that are posting all that irresponsible stuff uh, so it's going to be a, a huge division, but this is one of those things where you're like, what? At least if you're like me, you're like, no F and way. All right. So hopefully you all come to the timeline with me where that's no F and way. All right. One of the things I've been saying a lot is one thing weird about this, the C is at first it was like flu like symptoms. And then they're like, oh, wait, you know, some people are getting, um, having, losing their sense of taste and smell, but no other symptoms. Dum, dum, dum. Okay. So it still sounds a little flu like, oh, some people are getting gastrointestinal problems. Huh? That's kind of weird. Uh, well, it's just getting more and more ridiculous. Okay. This morning I heard like, um, there was an article, I was too lazy to dig it up now, but it was on Yahoo and it was like, um, other symptoms of the sea and they, I looked up several articles and I, they are going, uh, sometimes the C shows up as pink eye, which is just like an eye infection where your eye is kind of pink. Um, I've never had pink eye, but I've heard about it. Inflamed blood vessels. Oh, now they're saying the C can attack any organ. So you can have heart attack. Uh, you can have organ damage, renal failure, liver problems, uh, brain damage. But then this is the thing, okay, uh, in some of these articles, they go, oh, well, these are all known to be side effects of just being on a ventilator. Okay, so how do you know it's from the sea or just from, you know, being sick and on a ventilator? But uh, now it's all being blamed on the sea. And then they said, oh, you can get blood clots. Well, yeah, not moving for a week because you're in a, uh, in a coma on a ventilator also causes blood clots. But they, oh, no, it's the sea that causes blood clots. Um, let's see. And then, oh my gosh, now they're saying that it can cause rash or hives. 
I mean, it's like every, I'm waiting for them to say it causes cancer. It's the only thing they haven't said it, it causes. Almost every um, major health problem, it, it causes pneumonia, heart attack. Those are like the top two. All right, so then I saw this one this morning that just took the cake. <laughs> this one, I just, I laugh so hard. Come on, computer. COVID toes, COVID toes. Foot lesions, baby. New dermatologist warned that COVID toes may be the first or only symptom of a corona, a seek infection, mainly among children and young adult, adults. Dun, dun, dun. They get COVID toes. All right, so... I looked up like the definition and, and some of the places are saying it's basically, and I've never heard this word, but it's pernio, P-E-R-N-I-O, pernio. All right, let's see if I can get to the part that's interesting. All right, so these lesions per the council are purple colored and typically appear around the tips of the toes so they usually heal. All right, so I looked up pernio and pernio is another word for dum dum dum. All right. <laughs> so before I say it, so apparently you get this if you if these kids go outside in the fresh air and they don't have any socks or shoes on, and then they get these lesions, and then uh, I looked up pernio, and pernio is um. It's another word for frostbite. It's frostbite. It's, I'm like, so basically, if you have symptoms of frostbite, that could be the big C now. Uh, I and I have not any any dermatologists um, getting a weird um, rash of these C toes. Uh, oh, C19 is also shown up as conjunctivitis, aka pink eye, skin rashes digestive issues like diarrhea, and now dermatologists are looking into another potential sign of a C infection dubbed COVID toes. <laughs> Small dermal, derma, dermatological lesions on their feet, sometimes in the absence of other C symptoms, purple colored. The council compared the marks of those rolled from Result from chickenpox, measles, or pernio. And pernio is uh, is um, small lesions that appear after exposure to very cold temperatures. Okay. So, yeah, it's frostbite. Okay. <laughs> and then you, you can see that, it, that it's kids that are going outside with unprotected feet. It's not yet confirmed as a symptom of the sea. Other podiatry and dermatology associations have also noticed the correlation between the toe lesions and C infections. 13 year, old, 13 year old boy and another one, his name better not, he better not have that photo of that kid with the brown shirt. Two days, uh, suddenly presented with lesions on both feet. He, two days later, he presented with general C symptoms, fever, pain, and headaches, uh, along with intense itching and burning on the foot lesions. The boy was never tested for the C, nor were any of his family members. Okay, so maybe he had frostbite and the flu. We'll never know. Uh, and let's see. She also points out that an increase in blood clotting has been seen in those who are very ill. They see this, as asym in, this in asymptomatic patients, but also patients who are critically ill. Uh, so this is all very vague. I mean, there's no confirmations whatsoever. Um, I don't know. It, it's just, it's making it sound, they could easily back off on this and go, oops, never mind. But it's just, it's gotten to where like every symptom in the entire universe could be the C. And I'm wondering if, first of all, it confuses the issue. And second of all, like almost anything that get, you can, you could get now. Are you going to get terrified that you have the C? I got pink eye. I must have the C. I got, look, I've got a, a lump on my toe. I must have the C. I've got diarrhea. I must have the C. Um, I got a rash. It's the C. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's just, I'm like, one more. I'm just waiting. What else can they possibly blame? I mean, it's the ultimate fear porn. It's just jump the shark. 
Dun, dun, dun. No wonder my computer is looking so good. I'm not running. <laughs> I'm not running the uh, YouTube studio here. Now, I can't remember how to get to it, of course. <laughs> this is bad. I totally don't know how to use the new system. <laughs> and I just, even when I find something, I can't remember how I found it last time. Um, videos, live. Well, I could just try clicking on it. Let's see what happens. Video details. I don't want to edit you. Derm, 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 derm. More options? Nope. <laughs> How do I get there again? This is so bad. I don't know how to use my own YouTube channel. Oh, this is something interesting. I, I just wanted to bring this one up because it's so ridiculous. Important. This is a notification from YouTube. Important. Due to the C, we will conduct fewer human reviews to protect the health of our extended workforce. Unfortunately, as a result, we may remove content that does not violate our community guidelines. This is so ridiculous. First of all, in January, they said that they can remove even if it's not in violation of the community guidelines. Now they're saying, oh, we don't have any workforce because we're protecting them, so therefore we can't review uh, if you complain. But, you know, reviewing videos has got to be the world's easiest thing to do from home. There is just no reason why they couldn't have their workers stay at home and do this all day and never have to set foot out of the house. It, it's got to be the... Super easiest job. I'd be even shocked if they even had people coming in to do reviews to start with. There would be no reason for it. Uh, and I bet there's a million people out of work that would be more than happy to work for YouTube reviewing videos from home right now. So, I mean, this is ridiculous. It, it's just an, you know, it is some kind of excuse to basically remove everything and then not respond to your complaints. View in live control room. Dum, dum, dum. That must be it. Let's see if this kills my computer again, because if it does, then we're going to know. Okay, so that's it for all the ridiculous news. I'm sure there's more out there that I haven't seen yet. Let's see what's going on with the live ch lab chat. Now I've got, uh, like, I call it, like, reality has jumped the shark. Um, not that this, none of this stuff I've just covered has... Um, I treated myself for an eye infection. Glad I didn't go to the eye doctor. Yeah, you could end up quarantined at this rate. Anything is the C. People are buying this hook, line, and sinker. You know, I, again, I, I really am seeing more and more people wake up. And it is a, it's, it's an, op, I, it's like it's gotten so ridiculous that um, it's beating people over the head. Uh, to notice that something is not right. And a lot of people are really starting to notice. Uh, what were we talking about the other day? Um, for the first time ever, there is a conspiracy theory that's generally accepted as true and that, um, that you won't be made fun of. And that's that, uh, what is that guy that... Um, uh, that pedophile guy that supposedly hung himself in jail. Ugh, I can't remember his name now. Everybody accepts that he did not hang himself. I mean, it is just standard. And that is, if you think about it, that is the first time in the history of ever that there was a, a conspiracy theory that went and was accepted mainstream. And that is the first one. So it's like the, the, um, the walls are cracking a little bit on, on more and more people. Yeah, I think we all agree that we will skip the uh, vaccines and I will be skipping the uh, quantum dot tattoo. Um, just don't panic about it. I, I do believe that there'll be ways out if we look for it. Um, reality leaves you a way out. I mean, you can't... The Bible says don't get it. There's going to be a way to not get it. I, I don't think they're going to hold us down. 
and and like you know 10 beefy police officers hold your hand in there against your will and you have to get it and there'll be ways out there'll be exceptions there'll be exemptions um maybe you don't have a job that requires it there'll be ways out uh just it's going to be social pressure but uh you know after saying that like reality is magically changing, saying no to quantum dots is going to be easy. Yeah, Epstein, Epstein, that's the one. The Epstein did not kill himself. Conspiracy theory is mainstream. It's completely mainstream now. You, you see it all the time. You don't get made fun of if you say that. In fact, you get made fun of if you go, if you say he did kill himself. So that's the first time in forever that I've ever seen a conspiracy theory that well accepted. So just think about that. It's very interesting. And that's like once people start to question one thing, it just gets a little easier to accept to question another thing. And they made that so obvious. They could have covered it up way better. I mean, there is no way they're that dumb. He could have just had a heart attack like normal. I mean, you can't tell me there's not drugs to have people have a heart attack. Base River News, someone I know mentioned this morning that since the sea causes intestinal symptoms, now he wondered if he could be spread by a fart. <laughs> but he was serious. You see the fear porn. when Now that there's like every symptom in the entire universe, and it's weird because some of these I, I read and they're like, oh, well, these are just, you know, stand. Most of those are problems that anybody on a ventilator could get, except for frostbite. I'm like, okay, kids that go outside without foot protection sometimes come back with these, these uh, blisters that look just like frostbite, and you just happen to be doing the same thing you would be doing if you got frostbite, but maybe it's the C. Liminal, okay. You, they have been wanting to, oh, I thought you were going to say, all right, never mind. I'm just spacing out here. Memory loss. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The new symptom of the big C, memory loss. Dum, dum, dum. See, now, when I first heard about it, they were saying, you know, after a ventilator, you often have men memory loss. It makes sense. You, I guess they, what I was reading was they put you in a, in a coma so you won't flop around when you're on these things. Another thing that was really interesting, there was a um, video flopping around by a nurse who was saying that, Part of the reason that um, there is a shortage shortage or feared shortage of ventilators is because normally there's these kind of less inv invasive ventilators that you could use if you just have some problems. Like first they'll push you on oxygen and then there's these other ones. And then the really serious one is when they have to, you know, cut a hole in your throat, stick that in and put you in a coma and all that. But all those lesser invasive uh, ventilators require um they allow you to breathe your air out into the general milieu of um the uh air and they're like oh well that's too dangerous you shouldn't be able to breathe your germs out on everybody and so this really invasive one is the only one it's kind of like a closed system and so the nurse was instructed that he can't use any of these other less invasive ventilators if the person is suspected of having the C. And like everybody is suspected of having the C that has breathing problems. Um, so then everybody has to be on this invasive ventilator or nothing. And this invasive, you go into a coma for a week, you're going to have memory loss. It's bad for you, you know. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I see so many things on TV where like, Oh, maybe you should take off your shoes and you better wash all your food and all that. I'm like, aren't you cooking that food? You're going to smack it in the oven. I mean, it's going to cook down any germs that are on there. Jump the shark. Yeah, this is what I'm calling it. Reality is jumping the shark. You know, it's interesting how many people are telling me that uh, vaccines made them ill in this timeline. Nobody used to ever say that. I never heard anybody say that they personally got ill from a vaccine. That's interesting. I don't recall any obvious illnesses from any vaccines personally, but it has been a long time since I've had one. I think college was the last time I had one. I hope good comes from this strange era somehow. I think there's a lot of uh, options for it. I think a lot of people are going to wake up. They're starting to question um, being a little bit less... Um, 
obedient to just the crowd, you know? The doctor to follow about the COV is Dr. Shiva Ayura Dai. You know, I would be careful about blindly following anybody online. Think it through. Don't even blindly follow me. Uh, think it through. If, if there's something that doesn't make sense, question it. Everybody. Don't follow anybody. There's one doctor comes forth and says this, and another doctor comes forth and says that, and it might be 90% true and 10% false. Look for the 10%. Um, or, you know... It could be, there are so many conflicting things now. It could be a whole bunch of timelines sitting on top of each other. I don't know which one's going to come out, but I'm shooting for the good one. I didn't know memory loss was an actual symptom, supposedly. Um, you know, pretty much anything's been mentioned, but like I said, a lot of it can easily be blamed on the uh, coma that they put you in uh, when you're on the ventilator for a week or two or three and that messes with the head big time. Think for yourself. Yeah, don't follow me blindly. If I say something dumb, I mean, don't be really insulting. But um, and don't totally naysay the me. But if you disagree with me uh, respectfully, I will appreciate that. Especially if you have a logical viewpoint on it. Uh, if you've got, you know, data or something good to back it up. Because I might have totally not thought of something. And I need you guys to help me think of stuff. All right, so back to, like, the jumping of the shark. Dun, dun, dun. This was the weirdest thing. Where did I see this at? Um, I think it was some channel that really wasn't an Emmy channel at all. So in the Bible, there's this, like, mountain of temptation. But what is it in like modern day? This was just so weird. The Mount of Temptation is said to be the hill in the Judean de desert where Jesus was tempted by the devil at Matthew 4, 8. The exact lo location is unknown and impossible to determine, but it is generally identified with Mount Quarantania. <laughs> so, I have never heard of this before and then I saw it a few days ago. So... They're thinking that Mount, who, what kind of name is that? Mount Quarantania <laughs> in the Judean desert might be the same place as the Mountain of Temptation. Arabic name Jabal al Quarantal, <laughs> a mountain approximately 1,200 high, feet high, towering over the town of Jericho in the West Bank. Have you guys ever heard of a Mount Quarantania? Uh, over the town of Jericho in the West Bank, according to the public domain Catholic Encyclopedia. Quarantania is a limestone peak on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. <laughs> I'm like, come on. I swear the like this reality is just trolling you, you know, <laughs> just trolling you. Ah, uh, I should actually go to Matthew 4, 8. I think I went there and I didn't really see anything really screaming, but I, I'm wondering if um, Matthew 4, 8 will change to be. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And so apparently that was uh, Mount Quarantania. <laughs> so there's one giant... Um, There is one giant jump the shark. What if we could turn cow farts into fuel? Yeah, really? Why don't they? Yeah, if they're so worried about all that methane, why don't they just capture it? <laughs> yeah, I read something else and they're like, you know, Almost all of the um, supposed greenhouse gases are supposedly from like cars and stuff anyway. I mean, you start worrying about cows and it's like this percent of it. But, you know, I, you know, I used to think that global warming was a reasonable theory. But then I started 
getting kind of freaked out when it became like the sacred cow, like you couldn't question. Always question the sacred cows because some just because something's a good theory doesn't mean that it couldn't be wrong. Um, so for a long time, the GOP is just like, no, for sure, global warming is wrong. I'm like, well, you don't know. It's a sound sounding theory. And then it became like the the liberal right left is like, no, for sure it's right, and you're an idiot if you think it's wrong. I'm like, that is not the way to, the right attitude either. I'm like, well, global warming has some good points to it, and probably right. But I didn't like how it became like this sacred cow. But now with the Mandela, I'm like, nah, I, I don't think I really worry about the global warming because it's just another one of those fear porns, you know, like ozone layer and the other 700 things that were supposed to kill us. So that's what I think about it now. But not for the reasons the GOP doesn't trust it and not, you know, for the reason most people don't trust it. I just think it's one of the reality fear porns. Does anybody remember Tanzania being spelled different? Now, I'm pretty sure it was actually Tanzania for me, but I seem to recall other people talking about that as an ME. Quarantania near Covidia. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm like, are we going to get any more of those? All right, so now here's another one. You may have heard of this one, but this one is also just like ridiculous. Because this couldn't happen like by rant there's no way that this would just randomly occur and i mean if they were really trying to hide something this they would not like fling it in our face okay so this is a patent <laughs> by bill gates <laughs> and it's so funny because the the number of this patent if it ever loads is um <laughs> W O so it kind of sounds like the who W O two zero two zero. Okay. And that's the year 2020. And then it's zero six, zero six, zero six. So basically it's like six, six, six. So that's the um, publication number W O 2020 zero six, zero six, zero six. Um, so I would imagine that these publication numbers are supposed to just be like you know, the next one will be 060607, like that. I mean, theoretically. So it's just like ridiculous to think that this patent would be 666, basically. Okay, so what's the patent for? Um, so it's something that basically there's some kind of a monitor in the body of a human can tell if the human is performing um, a pre-decided task. And if they are performing it, then there would be cryptocurrency mining process. Um, so basically it makes it sound like um, it can tell if you're doing what you're supposed to. And if you do what you're supposed to, you get paid uh, in this case by like cryptocurrency mining system or something. Uh, a server may process, provide a task to a device of a user. So it sounds like the device is in or on the user, which is communicate communicatively coupled to the server. So one would imagine that it will be wireless. A sensor communicatively coupled or to or comprised in the device of the user may sense body activity of the user. Body activity data may be generated based on the sensed body activity of the user. The cryptocurrency system communicatively coupled to the device of the user may verify if the body activity data satisfies one or more conditions set by the cryptocurrency system and award cryptocurrency to the user whose body activity data is verified. All right, so there's a patent for this. The patent is 060606, which is just way beyond, you know, that's kind of like ridiculous to think that that would just be chance. Uh, it basically sounds like they, they'll monitor you and if you don't work, you don't get paid. So no more uh, goofing off surfing the internet when you're supposed to be working because they'll have a monitor on you. Um, I don't know, just creepy, creepy, creepy. But again, I mean, obviously designed to get attention here with this, with this info. 06060, really people? I mean, really? All right, so that... Now we are going to get to the Mandela portion of the show. I'm going to just see what you guys are up to. 
small electric shocks if you're performing bad. Yeah, they'll be like warning, you know, warning. Maybe if you're, you're really bad, they'll start subtracting money. <laughs> So, you know, there's been a lot of talk of this global currency, and maybe it will be some kind of um, cryptocurrency, blockchain business, who knows, start of the matrix. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I think that there could be a lot of different ways this goes. I think some, some places, some timelines we may be like, heck no, we won't go, and um, good things will come out of it instead of bad things. Just don't get the, just, you know, stay human. And also I think, you know, have sympathy for people who don't have their eyes open yet. I mean, there's a lot in the community. Those people are idiots and sheeples. And sometimes I kind of feel that way too. But, um, you know, they've, they've been brainwashed their entire lives. And, and not everybody is uh, the totally independent type. So, you know, try to realize that these people also probably love their mothers and raised their kids and, and did uh, many, many wonderful things that society needs. And now they need us to help them gently and kindly go in a healthy direction. So let's... Um, Let's try to help people more and denigrate them less, I think would be a good plan. And, you know, that's something I have to, it's good that I say it because it'll remind me to do it. Uh, I kind of just feel bad when I watch these channels that they just spend their whole time laughing at people and calling them stupid. And there's some good info in there, but um, I don't know. I just, I think that negativity is, you know, the dark side. Uh, let's try not to go there. I'm not getting a vaccine, a tattoo, an implant, or anything put in my body. Yeah, seriously. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that now, so it's interesting. Seems like someone is forcing people to show their true colors against humanity. I don't know. You know, sometimes I really just wonder if it's just like, you know, the more obvious it gets, you, you're either in for a penny or in for a pound. You're, you're going to... Are you just going to double down and just cling on to being, uh, to following whatever they say? Or are you going to finally break out and think for yourself? It's just, um, it's just getting more and more obvious. You're going to have to choose. Death before vaccine for a hoax. I just don't think it's going to come to that. You know, if you look at the Bible, it didn't say you're going to be put to death if you don't get the mark of the beast. It, it doesn't say that. It says just don't get it. So um, if you, if you, if you have, you're going to have the choice to not get it somehow. It might be a hassle. Um, people may say you're old fashioned and stupid. You might have to apply for an exemption, but uh, nowhere in there does it, it does imply that you have a choice because if everybody is just going to be held down by um, beefy goons and forced to get it, then there's no point in the Bible warning you about it because everybody's going to have to get it. It didn't say you're going to have to hide in, the, in a cave, so. It's hard to show love to the dark side, and that is what everybody is telling us to do. I didn't go that far, uh, although I have to say... If you've ever dealt with a really evil person, um, a lot of times if you show them love, it's like kryptonite. You know, they'll just run away. <laughs> it's like a great way to protect yourself. It's just people who hate love and then you show them love and it's like kryptonite. They just, they'll just run away from you and you'll be safe. It's like the safest thing in the world. But mostly what I'm saying is all those people don't get it. Like there's people that are... Um, terrified in their house that they've got to wash their um their food and their mail has to sit in the garage for three days and they're afraid that they're going to get covid toes and that they're um gonna you know they're they're terrified and and those aren't people a lot of those people aren't evil they're 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 just um you know brainwashed to believe this story and um it's very hard for them to look they've been brainwashed not to trust anything on youtube you know, they've been working on that for a couple of years. So look what I saw on YouTube. Oh, no, you said the word YouTube. You know, now I can't look at it. I can't even consider it because it's YouTube. And it and it's fake news. And it goes against the news said. And 
those people, they're not evil, and there's a lot of them. Well, I mean, some of them might be, but... Those are the people that are trying to get the vaccine. Oh, you'll be safe, you know. Let's see. Yeah, we're, I think we will have a some kind of choice. It might be a hassle. Okay, so to the... All right, so what is that thing? All right, what is that thing on the thumbnail? Step one. There's been so many of these weird mushrooms lately. And I swear last week when I saw them, it was the anemone stinkhorn mushroom... But now it is the anemone stinkhorn fungus. It is not the mushroom. It is a fungus. I'm wondering if we're going to have a split between fungus and um, like another mushroomy species. Because I, I looked and, well, what's the difference between a mushroom and a fungus? And um, I couldn't figure out why stinkhorn wasn't a mushroom when I looked at that. Actually, let me try it again. So these stinkhorns are supposed to be common in Australia. So I don't know if any of you guys are from Australia. Have you ever heard of these disgusting anemone stinkhorn mushrooms? They're supposed to be really common, um, especially in mulch piles. Um, they, they smell like rotting flesh, and they, they make this disgusting look to, to attract flies. The key difference between mushrooms and fungus is that the mushrooms are fruiting bodies of a certain fungi belonging to the order Agaricales, a phylum Basidiomycota, while the fungus is any member of eukaryotic microorganisms such as yeast, molds, mildews, mushrooms, etc. Wait a minute, that doesn't even make any sense. Mushrooms are fruiting bodies of certain fungi. Well, fungus is any member such as mushrooms that belong to the kingdom fungi. Okay, so that can't be right. <laughs> if mushrooms <laughs> are fruiting bodies of a certain fungus, and fungus can be any, any microorganisms such as mushrooms, then there's no difference. Okay, let me see if there's another. Okay, mushrooms, fungi, and stones, tools. I'm just like reading now, like, wait a minute. The reason I'm checking is because I want to see why stinkhorn suddenly became a fungus and not a mushroom. Mushrooms are beautiful, delicate, lumpy, bumping, fruiting body we see growing out of the ground or woods. Fungi is the entire organism, the mycelium roots and the mushroom. Okay. All right, so the mushroom is just the fruiting body. Doom, doom, doom. So is this not the fruiting body then? I mean, there's got to be roots down there and stuff. So maybe that's the normal body. It's not the fruiting body. Hmm. Anyway, we used to see like things flop out of the ground and go, Psh, and it was the fruiting body. But apparently now it is not a fruiting body, this uh, anemone stinkhorn. I'll show you some images. Uh, some of them were even more disgusting. Uh, some were so... They, I actually tried to find a less gross one, but then that one wouldn't load, and so I ended up with the more gross one. This one got on... Not this specific one, but it got on Reddit. That's how I saw it. I'm like, ew. All right, so what's the deal about these fungus? I guess they are not... I guess that is not a fruiting body. I think what we're going to see then is more and more gross, just like it's not the fruiting body, it's just a gross fungus. Commonly known as anemone stinkhorn, sea anemone fungus, and starfish fungus. 
recognizable for its foul odor of carrion and its sea anemone shape when mature. So that sounds like it's a fruiting body still, but found in gardens on mulch and in grassy areas. It resembles a red starfish covered in brown slime on a white stalk. It attracts flies, which spread its spores. So another thing about this is a, they're saying it's spread around. Um, and there's kind of like this vague history of it, where first they're saying it's common in Australia, and then they're saying, well, it, it probably uh, hitched a ride to other locations in in um, gardening plants. But then then they're like, oh, well, no, wait. There's another species that over here, and how did it get way over there? But no garden plants were taken over there, so maybe it, it just ha is wider spread than suspected. Let's see. It appears to have traveled to other parts of the world in garden or soil products. Transport in garden or soil products does not explain its presence on remote and unha uninhabited Pacific islands, nor its occurrence in South Africa and localities remote from any garden. Thus, unexplained localities cast doubt on the assumption that the species was spread from Australia and New Zealand by humans. All right, so native to Australia, but maybe not native to Australia. Uh, so what, found in Key Gardens in 1829... Kew Gardens, and later in California and North America. See, I've, that, I've never heard of that in California. Actually, I should probably look that up. Um, California. Let me sting a mushroom. California. Since I grew up here, I should know about this thing. Must include in California. Because Google now thinks that though I typed words into the search engine, I actually don't care if they're in there. This is the absolute most irritating thing that YouTube ever started doing. You have to put quotes around everything. I mean, yes, if I type that word in, I actually want to know if that word is in there. All right, I'm not finding anything on California. It kind of made it sound like it was in California a really long time, if it was 18-something with the one before it's totally vague i think this one is very much in flux it's all over the place there's no dates it's got this really short wiki mentions all these locations but can't find any more info on it the stink horns documented from california there's almost no info i bet you're gonna find that these are springing up all over california uh, in the next, I don't know, months or whatever, though. All right, so ill gross, gross and gross. So here's another kind of creepy thing. This is one I would really like to do some video on, if I dare. Atlantic black sea hare. So there's this, like, rabbity-looking... I don't know, what is that squid thing? These are creepy. Kill the sound, boink. See, it'll be so kind as to go full screen. What? So that thing, they like to swim near the shore. Oop. That's enough of that. Check them out because when there's a lot of them, there's, they're very weird looking. So there's an Atlantic black sea hare that makes me wonder if there's going to be a Pacific one. Snail without a shell. No, it's a hammer. Said, no. Okay, let me just look up what they really say about these things. Atlantic black sea hare or sooty sea hare is a species of sea slug, a marine gastropod, mollusk in the fountain. Okay, so it is like, it's like a big snail, but it looks like a, it's kind of like, it has a, a head kind of like a rabbit. It's got like little bunkies on the top. Lives in the warm waters in the Caribbean Sea and off the south, south, southeastern coast of the U.S. where it feeds on seaweed. I don't know if any of you have ever seen these things. Um, there's a lot of video of them coming really close to the shore, so... 
And it looks like they're fairly big, too. Just interesting. I think that since this one's the Atlantic one, let's see if there's a Pacific one just for fun. Because if one is an Atlantic, I bet you there's going to be a Pacific coming up. Ah, oh, look, California black sea hair. You know we had to have a sea hair. Looks like they're fairly large, too. The black sea hair can grow very large. 31 pounds. Wow. I think I might have saw, I think I might have seen an image of this and not know what it was. Yeah, I think I did. Maybe it was that black sl sea slug I had on a while ago. I think it, okay. So yeah, I had this on a while ago, I think, this, and I wasn't really sure what it was. So see there, it's got these little ear things. It really looks like something out of Dr. Seuss. Okay, so this is the California sea hair here. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. All right, so anyway, they swim really cool too. Just putting it together. Okay. This is not really a sea-related thing, but we were talking about um, Comet Atlas, which just happened to have the nickname C-19. And last I heard it was breaking up and wasn't going to be that bright. Let's see. April, do we have any April news? Boy, there's not much from April. Let me just go to news and see if I can find anything more recent. Three weeks ago, one week ago. Dang, there's not really a lot of new news. Um, so we talked about this like green, um, what do you call it, meteor, comet. When it's out in space, it's a comet. And they were talking about us maybe even it getting so bright that we could see it during the day. Dum, dum, dum. And it just happened to be named C-19 as a nickname. Dum, dum, dum. But the latest story is it's breaking up and we might not be able to see anything. But they're not sure. But usually when they break up, you can't see them. So anything could still happen. But it sounds like it's on course to break up and not be seen. But... There's a new comet behind Atlas, and it's called Swan. So, I mean, if C-19, Atlas, um, there's Atlas Shrug, there's C-19. I don't know what else can you say about Atlas as being symbolic. So, uh, Comet Swan arrives to take its place for Sky Watchers. Dum, dum, dum. So Atlas is now falling apart, is fragmented into several pieces, quickly dispersing and not leaving behind enough material to produce any kind of significant display. Soon after this comment was discovered near the end of 2019, uh, blah, blah, it brightened, blah, blah, blah. Sadly, those expectations were not met. But in another, let's see. Enter Comet Swan on April 11th, the same day that Atlas broke into three pieces, amateur astronomer Michael Matiazzo discovered a new comet while looking at data. So right when Atlas broke up, the same day uh, Swan was discovered. That's interesting. The comet suddenly appeared in images from Soho's solar wind and Estropy's instrument, which go, goes by the acronym Swan. Okay, so it's named after S Solar Wind Anastropi's instrument. Matiazzo has discovered eight comets in 2004 by carefully checking Swan data most every day. Coincidentally, ugh, quit that. Coincidentally, Matiazzo lives in Swan Hill, Victoria, Australia. Yeah, just as giant coincidence.
Currently, Comet Swan is only accessible to those south of the equator. It's currently located in the faint constellation Sculptor. Never heard of it. No, not far from the first magnitude star Formal Hot. Never heard of that. As of April 16, it was shining at magnitude plus 7.8, easy enough to pick up in good binoculars and displaying a head roughly one-sixth the apparent width of the moon. The question is, will Swan evolve into a bright object? The, consens the consensus is maybe. We'll close, it'll pass closest to Earth on May 12th. Assuming Comet Swan continues to brighten at its current space, it could reach third magnitude during, the, magnitude during the final week of May. That would make it bright enough to be visible to the naked eye just when those of us in the northern hemisphere might have an opportunity to see it, both very low in the west-northwestern sky after sunset and again very low in the east-northeast sky before sunrise. The fact that the comet appeared quite suddenly suggests that it might be undergoing an outburst in brightness. So then the question is, is it going to get brighter or is it going to fizzle out? Stay tuned. Yum, yum, yum. I just think it's interesting because I really just, um, it used to be pretty rare that you ever even hear about being able to see any of these comets um, with the naked eye even. And now there's like, First there's C19 and now there's Swan. The day that C19 breaks up, then we get Swan. Um, I don't know. Just weird. Timeline is so weird. So now I look for, you know, weird names and stuff and everything because that's how this timeline likes to operate. Okay, this one is from Linda Espinosa, commenter on the channel. She just noticed something about last week's. And I, I had been looking right at it, but I just didn't quite see it. And she did. All right, cow tails. Now, I, I did show you that this one, which I thought was ridiculous with all this floofies. I've never seen cows with all these floofies. Uh, but... Overall, the other thing she mentioned, which I just didn't quite get together, is their tails are so freaking long now. Um, they used to be this short little thing that would just, blip, blip, for me anyways, they weren't, they weren't fluffy on the end, but they also weren't nearly this long. And I've said before that the tails on a lot of things have gotten longer, but they're just, they're too long. They're way too long. They used to just be less than half that length. I mean, it's getting to be like their horse tails. Look at, they're trimming that one. This is a new story. They have giant floofy tails, but they just trim them. That tail is way, way longer. They didn't used to ever be that buffed either. It's crazy. They're, for me, they're actually longer than they used to be. Uh, to me, that looks like it's going to break its back, but I guess, you know, biology is stronger here. We didn't have, used to have them that spread apart. It's actually pretty impressive. So, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. The other thing that she remembered, and when she said, these are things that's like, I kind of saw it, but I just couldn't get it. Um, like, I knew there was something wrong with this, this word, but... Um, Guernsey cow for her, and I agree, it used to be G-U-R-N-S-E-Y, Guernsey. There was Guernsey chip cows and Jersey cows, but now they're, they're Guernsey cows. There's a, an E in there. Instead of Guernsey, they're Guernsey. And so that's why I was getting confused because I remembered Guernsey with like this and then Jersey, but now it's like a combo one. There's no such thing as G-U-R-N-S-E-Y cows anymore. If you type that in, you just get this other one. And, you know, I was reading on the cows, and I'm like, what cow is that? Oh, yeah, but I'm, I missed it. So uh, good find on Linda Espinosa on both of those. They were like ones I saw, but I just, you know, I didn't, they didn't soak in. All right, I want to see what you guys are up to. I'm really not watching the uh, stream as much as I usually do.
Are you trying to make it hard for me to eat mushrooms again? <laughs> hey, look, there was no spiders. There was no snakes. I was a good girl. <laughs> Mushroom John is one of my nicknames. You might want to rethink that name. All mushrooms were fungus. Yeah, it's just that when you saw that's like giant fruiting body blobby thing, those used to be mushrooms. But they're not calling this one a mushroom. Um, so is that, that gross thing not the fruiting body then, I guess? I, I agree with you that all mushrooms were fungus. But why did they not call that one um, a mushroom? So it's not the fruiting body, I guess? Um hmm. Used to be, though, you just, fungus was like, you know, diffuse slime, you know, like whitest powder over things or black, you know, like on cheese or something. And then if you had this, this structural thing, then that was a fungus. But I, I don't think that's going to be the case anymore. I can't find anything that I'm looking for in Google anymore. Nobody can. Google's terrible now. Some people have blamed it on um, the uh, the skills of the um, search engine optimization experts, kind of taking over um, by getting them getting all of those commercial sites placed high, ranked high. But some of it, I it's squarely on Google's shoulders, and one of them is that. They're not using the words I type in. It used to be that you would have the option to leave out some of the words, but now they force you. They just go ahead and do the search. I'm like, no, I type that word in there because I want that word to be on the website that I am looking for. I, I, don't, I don't know why they would think I wouldn't. Fear, rage, always trying to keep us in the serpent brain, and that lowers the immune system. Yeah, it's true. You know, everybody living in terror right now are probably more likely to get ill than anybody else. But, I mean, if according to the studies there, I mean, assuming that viruses are real, and I really don't even know in this timeline, you know, what reality is going to barf up as the official storyline for illnesses. But um, according to those two studies, it's got the same proximate death rate as the flu, so um, it's not worth uh, shutting down the universe for. But again, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot going on. You know, some people are going to say that it's the deep state. Um, I think that there spiritually might be something else underneath that even. Yeah, LOL, swan, swan song. I thought of that. Is that going to be your swan song? But then swan, you also have um, the concept of growing up, being ugly when you're little and growing up into a beautiful swan. So it kind of reminds me of the I Ching. You know how the I Ching, it, there's always two different ways to interpret it. Which way do you choose? Like a long, long time ago, I did the I Ching and it says, uh, and my answer was, it's all downhill from here. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, downhill, it, it, it could sound like it's all going to hell in a handbasket. That could be downhill. But then downhill is the easier route. It gets easier when you're going downhill. So there's absolute opposite uh two different interpretations and I, I so this swan thing reminds me of the I Ching you could totally interpret it as positive or you could totally interpret it as negative so I kind of looking at it from a kind of a I don't know a symbolic thing is that okay C19 breaks up the big C breaks up and behind it is the swan and uh, so, you know, that could go either way. It just reminds me of the I Ching. Which way? Maybe that's what it is, you know? Out of this, you can go two ways. Which way do you go? I don't know. I don't know. This, I don't know. Wormwood. Let's see. If the C didn't kill you and Alice didn't either, the third comet will do the job. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't, you know what? <laughs> the, 
there, you know, if the ozone didn't kill me and the acid rain didn't kill me and the peak oil and the, um, the COVID and the Kobe and the, um, and the um, swine flu and the um, Ebola and the AIDS and then the other 75 things that I forgot about haven't killed me. Radiation from the TV. When I was a kid, it was the TV radiation going to get you. Then it was the microwave, kitchen microwave radiation going to get you. Now it's the 5G radiation going to get you. And the um, solar flare didn't get me. And the um, pole reversal hasn't got me. And let me think what else is going to get me. The radiation from the cell phone hasn't given me brain cancer yet. Ah, there's a, probably a bunch of other stuff that hasn't killed me yet. What's the name of the third comet? Yeah, I don't know. It just said the two. It was C-19 and then Swan. <laughs> what are the odds? It, sh it shows up suddenly. They even made a big point. Oh, it suddenly showed up right on the day that... That C-19 broke up. And the guy just happens to live on this Swan Hill place, too. A program does not name new comments. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what's the storyline behind that? How do you... Doesn't the person who um, finds it gets to name it? He named it after his uh, location? I don't know. You ride on the cow's tails way longer. Yeah, that was um, Linda Espinosa. It was kind of smacking me in the head, but, you know, I, I just wonder how many Emmys are like this. That I kind of thought something was off, but I didn't get the whole thing. I, I saw the fuzzy. I fixated on that, and I totally forgot to think about the length in general. And the name, too. I was confused about the name, but instead of – I couldn't quite bring what the old spelling is. But once I saw her write it, I'm like, that's what it was. Something was bugging me about the name – and that was what it was. You know, somebody was saying DuckDuckGo and a lot of the other search engines actually use um, Google as their base. Something like that. So you can't. All right, let me see what's the deal. Is it true that DuckDuckGo uses Google search servers and algorithms instead of proprietary ones? No, we do not use Google search servers or algorithms. The only thing from Google that we currently use is we anonymously search YouTube on your behalf to display video results, which is necessary because, unfortunately, that is the only place where that content resides. Um... So they're saying video results come from Google. We also allow people to watch YouTube videos on DuckDuckGo that is not anonymous. In that case, though, we have a warning that clearly indicates that Google can track you. We still do our best to allow you to watch YouTube videos on DuckDuckGo in a less tracking way. Hmm. Okay, so... That's interesting because I keep hearing that they use Google servers, but they're denying it here. Hmm. All right. Well, it might be worth trying them. I don't. Do you notice any difference? Is it better? Yeah, it doesn't, I'm not seeing anything about them using Google. All 
All right, well, I'm going to have to start getting in the habit of using them because Google is making me hate them. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so what you guys up to? I tried DuckDuckGo and it left me a bit frustrated. Yandex has better search results than Google or DuckDuckGo. Bing should be renamed as blind. Yandex. Let's type in something. Um, dum, dum, dum. Let's type in something salacious. There's got to be 100,000 articles that are proof the C is a hoax. Let's see if we'll get any of those. C19 is a total hoax, and here's more proof. C19, a fake pandemic. Uh, there's still a lot of media... Um, propaganda on there but there are some it doesn't look as bad as some of the other ones anyway I'll have to try it out Yandex Oh, there's got to be something better than Google I, I'm going to try to think in my mind that there is better a good search engine like the old days. Like Google used to be, actually, is the sad fact. Um, dum, dum, dum. Yandex. If I find one good search engine out of this YouTube stream, it will be well worth it. Well worth it. You know, I've used DuckDuckGo before, and I just wasn't loving it. I guess that's why I just kind of went, meh. You know, the first time I used Google, I, I loved it. It was so much obviously better than everybody else. Now I wish I could just get something as good as anything that used to exist. Monotropa uniflora. Let me check that one out. Wait, 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 wait. Let's use the new one. Monotropa uniflora. <laughs> Images. Doink. Huh. Interesting. It looks more like flowers. Web. So what is it? Ghost plant. Indian pipe or corpse plant. Herbaceous perennial native to the... It looks more like a mushroom. All right, so if I click on one of these, will it be big? Oh, look, it's big. View image. It's big. All right. I'm liking that. I can make it even bigger. So that makes me happy. Yandex to the rescue. Ninety watching, only twenty eight likes. Well, you know, sixty of them might be like bots and stuff. Tipping cows still a thing? I think they sleep on the ground now. Yeah, yeah, it used to be. Tipping cows is something, I've talked about that before. I could never figure that mess out. Uh, I know one person who said she did cow tipping, 
But then I wondered if she was lying because um, I went online and they said, no, that's just a joke that they play on city folks. That They tell them that you can tip a cow and you can't tip a cow. Uh, but then it, it did make sense to me that if a cow was totally asleep, even though they're heavy, they're probably a little bit delicately balanced. And if you really, really get a good giant push, you might be able to tip some of them. Um, but, you know, I looked it up through the years and I would kind of get this vague story. Like I couldn't quite tell if it was a real thing or not. But, you know, here, a lot of those big animals sleep on the ground and they never did that before. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's look and ask Yandex what the current story on cow tipping is. Um, the evidence against cow tipping is immense. Well, I mean, you don't need evidence. Either you can tip them or you can't. It's a fun joke that farm kids would play on their friends. Yeah, I wonder if it's just one of those things that like is real in some timelines and not others. Now they're saying it's possible if you had a few other people with you, you could accidentally kill the cow. Can't imagine a cow flopping over would likely die, but. Even if one was caught standing up in the dead of night. See, in the old timeline, they slept standing up. If They only lay down if they were sick. just makes the physics of it all you see yeah if he was asleep though then he wouldn't be you know pushing against you when you pushed him so yeah okay it looks like it's probably not real here you would think there would people there would be people going look i tried it you can't do it but instead all you get is well looking at the physics of a cow just again the timeline is just weird You'd think there'd be somebody who tried tipping a cow and either got their butt kicked or tipped it. All these, like, farm people. You saw those cows out there. Did you ever heard the... You ever had the urge to tip one? That's weird from the... That's weird because the cows come from the island of Guernsey. Well, maybe it was G-U-R-N-E-C-Y island back then. So yeah, anybody ever try to tip a cow? Has anybody even, even had any experience? Chanty Moody agrees on the tails and the um, name. I'm like so scattered today. Fainting goats is funny. Yeah, you know, that showed up and it was just like a few. First, there was narcolepsy for humans. And then there was just like every now and then a, a rare disease caused a cow to have narcolepsy or a goat to have narcolepsy. Then the next thing you know, there's a whole breed of fainting goats. Now, there's all these different animals that do it. And it got really prevalent in society. Uh, narcolepsy is what, 1% of the population now? Um, the symptoms are not as uh, cut, as dry as they used to be. The Cars Pixar movie shows them going out into the field scaring and tipping the cow cars. Yeah, but they could say it was just a, a myth and they put it in the show. So it's tricky that way.
It still spins me out. The milk teats are now in the back. That particular Emmy freaks me out. Yeah, yeah, it totally freaks me out. It looks so uncomfortable. And they're just getting bigger and bigger, too. I mean, it looked uncomfortable before, but now it's like, come on. I think in my old timeline, it, they would just make the milk faster. You didn't have to have this giant, massive sack. I mean, you don't need that big a sack if you can milk milk faster. I've known about fainting goats for many years. It's been quite some time since those showed up. It's definitely was, I think, it might have been around, it might have been pre-2012, but it's been a while. It's definitely a really, I didn't realize it was an Emmy at the time, but now looking back, it was classic, but it has been a while. There's no real test for the C19. It's fake. You know, it could be. There's so many things. It could be fake. It could be just like a nasty flu. Uh, maybe viruses don't exist. Maybe they do. I don't know what that reality is going to barf up next, frankly. But, you know, with the empty hospitals and all, I'm not worrying about the C. All right. I mean, I'm going to still follow the cultural norms and you know, try to help people relax, and I'm not going to try to scare people, but. Okay, so this one is from John Austin. Um, how do you spell mosquitoes? Futuristic 10 bucks. Woohoo! Thank you. Dom, dom, dom. So how do you spell mosquitoes, people? Someone is giving us a grand tour of different realities. You know, it just seems like every month that goes by, the information becomes more scrabbled and um, conflicting and crazy. And um, Oh, here's a couple things I saw, was it two weeks ago that I went, meant to talk about last week, but I forgot. Um, just things changing so quickly. One of them was I keep an eye on like anything shipping related since I do it for a living and one of them was that UPS said that they will no longer guarantee any of their ship times because they were so overloaded with um, volume of everybody at home just shipping everything in. They were, they were too busy and they couldn't promise their ship times. And that totally made sense because I, my business has been way up and everybody I know that ships have been busy as, as busy can be. Uh, and, and I don't even ship like super important stuff for the most part. I mean, people are buying like pop sockets and art supplies and all this other stuff. You know, uh, most of what I, I ship is not, you know, in the essential department. So I was not at all surprised to hear that. And then um, I heard that UPS was or USPS was doing a very high volume. And I'm like, well, that makes total sense because UPS is totally doing a, a, high, a high volume. But USPS said they were still managing to keep their normal ship times, although it was uh, a strain. But I'm like, well, maybe UPS is better at that kind of thing because they get very high ship volumes in the Christmas time more than some of the other um, more commercially oriented groups. And they also... The thing with USPS is those those drivers go to every house every day, and USPS doesn't. They only go to the houses that are getting a package. So it'd probably be easier for USPS to adapt. But then I hear, like a week later, I hear, oh, uh, USPS might go bankrupt because of low volume. I'm like, what? It was just high volume last week. And I talked to my um, the people at my post office and they've been they said they've been slammed out of their minds and they can't understand why anybody would say it's low volume so then I'm like okay well what does UPS say I'm going to look that up again and I look it up and now last I checked a couple days ago it says that they're not um they're not promising they're not they're not promising to keep their normal guarantee times but then they gave this weird vague reason like because um you know things are are um, hard to predict with the C and they didn't say anything about high volume, nothing. And I'm like, well, why even, you know, they didn't say they had a lot of sick people. So why even stop? It was just weird. So suddenly the high volume was out the window and there was no evidence of it. And U USPS said it was low volume. I'm like, okay. So shortly after this thing started, like a couple weeks ago, another story I heard was that, um, 
alcohol sales were way down and uh, all these alcohol vendors, uh, we're not talking about the like rubbing alcohol that is used for um, hand sanitizer, but like the drinking kind, that the volume was way down because the restaurants weren't buying it. And, you know, they were just going to have to dump it at the grocery stores. And it was going to be massively cheap. And, and Corona was losing a bunch of money because their, their name sounds like the virus. And all these alcohol companies were, you know, in the can. And then a week later, I hear that alcohol's volume sales is through the roof because everybody's at home drinking and blah, blah, blah. And then that kind of story sounds good, too. But it's the complete opposite of the other one. I'm like. And I can't find any evidence of those previous articles where they said that the alcohol sales were way, 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 way down. So in one timeline, alcohol sales were way down and shipping was way up. And now we're in the shipping is way down and alcohol sales is way up timeline. And it's making me crazy. Urgh. Liquor stores here have been lined up. Yeah, I don't know. That's the current timeline anyway. In Canada now, they can ship wine and beer to your home. Oh, that's interesting. Don't they, they don't have any laws about it being a flammable? Not that anybody ever follows those laws around here. Um, you're not supposed to ship alcohol without doing certain things and, or anything with alcohol in it. And when I buy that stuff, they always just ship it normal. They don't even put like any plastic bag around it or anything. I mean, it's just basically ridiculously flouted at all times um, for shipping in the U.S. The only time I've had them follow it is when I ordered a five-gallon pail of alcohol. Um, that was the only time. Then they send it what it like toxic, toxic uh, freight or whatever, and you had to sign for it and all that. All right, so mosquitoes. Oh, okay, so John Austin remembers mosquitoes spelled just O-S. No reason to put an E on there. You've already got a vowel. That's how I remember it. It was like volcanoes. Volcanoes was like that too. Mosquito, and you needed an S, you put an S on it. But now it's mosquitoes, like T-O-E-S, like you've got toes. It's like COVID toes, mosquitoes. I also remember volcanoes, volcanoes, the same way with just, you just stick an S on there, but in this timeline, you have to add an ES, which looks so wrong. That just looks so wrong for me. So I agree with John Austin. It was um, mosquitoes and volcanoes, no extra E for me. Doom, doom, doom. Mosquitoes or mosquitoes. You have mosquitoes in this timeline. Yeah, potatoes had the ES. You're right. For some reason, I don't think it looks right if you don't put the ES. Potatoes. Because otherwise it's potatoes. Potatoes had the E. They were the weird one. What was that other one you had on there? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Yeah, let it, tomatoes. I think that's an older one, but tomatoes. Dang, you know, they both look wrong for tomatoes. I'm not sure on tomatoes. They both look terrible. Does it OS or OES? I know volcanoes and mosquitoes were, did not have an ES. Tomatoes, they both look terrible. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I ordered a fiver right, right when this whole C thing, um, when I said I'd sell mostly non-essential things, I do sell alcohol now a little bit. Kind of hand sanitizer. I mix it with glycerin and stuff. But it's not like real, it doesn't have that gel factor like the commercial stuff. 
Yeah, I, or, I ordered some fibers and I, I just like break it up and resell it. I actually just put a little bit up each day because it sells so fast. I can't ship it and like it'll all be sold in two days and I'll never and then it'll take me two weeks to ship it and people will be mad and they'll leave leave paved uh reviews. I, I've seen people do that. They just want the money so they sell it all, but it takes them two weeks to ship and people get upset. Oh yeah, the tomato fruit or veggie thing. Everything is all weird. Fruits are veggies, veggies are yeah, I went into that a while back. Witches is fruits and witches is nuts and it's it's total helter skelter. Yeah, actually making hand sanitizer is pretty easy if you can get your claws on the alcohol. I'm actually really good at sourcing things, especially during uh, shortages. That's how I started my business is on uh, a previous trend. Everybody's trying to find gallons. I'm like, well, if you can't find gallons, then you should buy a fiver. Unfortunately, the next side up is a drum, and that's like, um, it weighs so much, and I, I, was, I don't want to get stuck with a ridiculous amount of alcohol. A drum is like 55, uh, 55 gallons. I think it's more than that. Plus, I'm not sure if the truck could even get up the hill and deliver it. We have kind of a steep driveway. Okay, so what else we got? Do, do, do. Okay, this is weird. Um, apparently, <laughs> do you guys remember Spain having like a bunch of property in Africa? I remember them just being kicked out. I mean, Africa was Africa. Spanish North Africa. Apparently they have nine territories in Africa. Two autonomous cities, Ceuta and Melilla, plus other minor territories, Plazas de Soberania. Historical Spanish North Africa, former Spanish colonies in North Africa. Okay, those are the old ones, but. All right, that is not what I wanted to find. All right, I'll go look at Melilla. Is a Spanish autonomous city located in northwest coast Africa, sharing a border with Morocco. Spanish autonomous city. Let me see what those are. Last time I searched this, which was last week, this was found by um, a user on Redcon named Darth Fig. So good find on that one. An autonomous community is a first level political and administrative division created in accordance with Spanish constitution of 1970 with the aim of guaranteeing limited autonomy of the nationalities and regions that make up Spain. Okay, so if you're, um, if you are autonomous communities of Spain, then you're, um, you're part of Spain. Autonomous communities of Spain and Africa. So there's two, Suta and Melilla. There was nine territories last I checked, though. And it said there was nine. 
maybe this is it. Let me try this one. Contemporary Spanish North Africa, Spain's two autonomous cities, uh, the Canary Islands. Oh, weird. It just said there was nine like last week. Now I can't find the nine. Nine Spanish territories in Africa. I looked up that exact thing. Let's see. Am I still on that Yandex? No, see, I searched it on Google last time. I'm going to do it again. Nine Spanish territories. I'll just do that and see what we get. Oh, weird. Maybe there's not nine right now. It's getting like that. It's just like you can't even keep track of anything anymore. I didn't even think it would be hard to find because it just popped right up when I wrote nine Spanish territories last time. It was like every art every link said nine Spanish territories. Anyway, there's still a bunch of territories, but maybe they're not all. The Spanish sovereign territories in North Africa. These are separate. These are separate pieces of land scattered along the Mediterranean coast, coast bordering Morocco. The name re refers to the fact that these territories have been part of Spain since the formation of the modern country and since like 1556 and are distinguished from African ter territories obtained by Spain during 19th and 20th centuries. Historically, a distinction between the so-called major sovereign territories and the minor sovereign ter territories refrain to number of smaller exclaves and islands along the coast. In the present, the term may ref term mainly the, the term refers mainly to the latter. All right, how many of them are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this must be them then. There are historically three plazas de soberania. Oh, okay. But there are th two others beyond those nine. Maybe that's why they're not saying nine anymore. The disputed Perigil Island and this Alberon Island. Those two weren't on there last time I looked. So maybe that's why it doesn't say nine anymore because there's about to be 11. Look at that one. That one's really cool looking too. Check it out. Neat. Neat, neat. All right, so nine plus two more. So anyway, I guess Spain owns all these little enclaves. All I, I don't remember them owning sections of Africa, not in current timeline, not like in current, um, you know, maybe long ago, but not now. Pump where Tunisia is, wasn't there. Everything's so different. Rachel Green or Rachel Green with an E. Ah, yeah, I'm not a total expert, but I don't really think the E was there. I wouldn't swear on that one, though. I've seen that facts that no one cares about change a lot. Yeah. And around 2017, I swear I spoke with him about the Spanish territory in the south of Morocco. It was an actual thing. It could be these have been developing for some years. I mean, I didn't check it last year, but I know when I was younger that wasn't there. But, yeah, they could have been there in 2017. I, there might be, like, two of them then, and now there's four, and then last week there's nine, and now it looks like there's two more developing. I swear last time I looked, I typed in nine, and it was everywhere, and that was on Google. We shift more than we think. Some changes are minute. Others are more noticeable. I think it's just getting crazy. I mean, it used to be uh, stuff changed from three months ago. Now it's like stuff changed from three days ago. Suta and Melilla popped up in 2018 from nowhere and nobody knew them before. Ah, interesting. 
Yeah, I agree. Courtney Cox, I don't, that new E in the Courtney, I agree with that. You need 99.9% .9 alcohol to kill a virus. Right. Okay. They want it 60, according to the CDC, it should be 60% or more. Um, but when you're making up your alcohol mix, if you're adding other stuff in, then it's best to use the pure 99.9% .9 alcohol because you're mixing other stuff in and you want to make sure it's still 60%. If you get the 60% alcohol, then you have to use it straight. You can't add anything. But I add like glycerin and other stuff. So I get the 99.9% .9 so that I can add stuff in uh, and still keep it. I keep it at about 80, 85%, depending, 75%. Somewhere between 75 and 85. I have different mixes that I make. But mostly I just put glycerin and like some uh, like essential oils in is mostly what I put in. Um it, you can't really find that thickener like the um, that makes it all gel, and it doesn't do anything for kids. It doesn't do anything other than make it more convenient in a gel. But um, that's from my understanding. The current storyline is that's why they're having trouble getting hand sanitizer back on the counter, is because they don't have the like the thickener and some of the chemicals. They don't have enough of the chemicals they like to use. Um, to 50 times more than they normally turn out. Also, you know, even the alcohol. People don't like to store a lot of alcohol. I mean, some chemicals, they'll have a giant warehouse full of it, but alcohol is so flammable that they don't usually make a ton of it in advance and just having it sit around the shelf. So they've got to ferment that out, and then they've got to find the other chemicals. Uh, it's not like um, some things where there's giant warehouses full. I mean, that's the storyline anyway, so... That's why, like, toilet paper is going to come back a lot faster than hand sanitizer. They only had enough um, factory for, you know, reasonable production anyway. I use the 90% alcohol for disinfecting the shoes. Yeah, that's fine. They actually suggest that you put, I mean, assuming that any of the storylines are true, the official story is that a little bit of water actually kills the virus. Um, a little water mixed in with your alcohol is supposed to be... Uh, more of a killer for the viruses that have the protein coating like the C is supposed to have. So they suggest you put like 10, 20% water in there. Even President Trump said Nambia. You know, it was Namibia for me, but I heard a lot of people remember Nambia. My timeline had Namibia, but... Yeah, it's tempting to say the more pure the alcohol, the better. Uh, supposedly, though, the supposedly the water um, interacts with the outer protein sheath of certain viruses like the C and then helps the alcohol in, penetrate better. And that's the storyline why a tad of alcohol is supposed to be better. So futuristic remembers Namibia. Yeah, nope, it was Nim I that one I that one I remember as time current timeline. I swear there was a Moroccan territory in Spain where Gibraltar is now. Hmm, not sure on that one. Okay, the last one. I hope some of you remember as me, because otherwise I'll, I'll feel insane. But uh, the giant scar on Dr. Evil's face, I swear that was not on there. And it's huge. <sighs> Do you remember the giant scar on Dr. Evil? I just, I remember, I remember the finger... And it's weird because it's on the side of his face that he usually kind of hides and almost all the photos have it hidden. But I know I saw him, you know, lots of times straight and I don't remember that. And I saw that. I'm like, oh, why did they put a giant scar on Dr. Evil? That's not right. Wait a minute. <laughs> I look it up and it's like, no, that wasn't on there, dudes. Not for me. There is no freaking way. Oop, shoot, it finally did show. So this big old scar, 
I should try Yandex and see how it... I totally don't remember this giant scar. I just totally don't remember that scar. Let me try this Yandex thing. Do, 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 do. Images. Yeah, see, I like Yandex. I don't remember this. This thing. I totally do not remember that. Ooh, look at all these ones down here. Okay. Drawings. Close-ups. There it is again. And I get that the eye the eyelids all thickened over here too. Yeah, see, it's all. I just don't remember it. Do you guys remember that? I don't remember. I don't remember any scar. I wasn't even a big fan of the movie, but I saw most of it and I saw him all the time. And I'm like, oh, it's a dude with a bunch of, you know, white powder on his face. Ha ha. What are you doing on Russian Yandex? Somebody suggested doing Yandex is not sucking like Google now sucks. So I'm going to try it. I do like that you can get the images to be big, which is really useful when I'm running a live stream. Plus, that name is easy for me to remember. I remember a small scar on his left side on the face near the eye. Ooh, this is interesting. You know, I was going to run this through um, retconned and see if other people remembered me before I remembered it, before I stuck my neck out. But then I'm like, yeah, we're just going to sink or swim with this one. Who remembers the giant scar? It wasn't there before. Yes. Because I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to be insane if you guys all say you remember that. Because I am sure that was not. And it's huge. China insider. <laughs> okay. So. Dum, dum, dum. I kind of looked up costumes. And some have it and some don't. Interestingly, the ones where you can see the, the face better um, have it, tend to have it, and then the ones that you couldn't see the face. The other thing I don't, I think is weird is I really remember um, that pinky thing kind of being more like this. It, it seems like it's, it's more like this in the, in the current timeline. I, it seems like he's holding it more. It's just a little different. It's a little more sideways or something. There's something a little bit different about the pinky. This guy really reminds me of it because I just... Oh, he's got the scar. Let's see. I don't think there's a scar on that one. It seems like the ones where you can see the face close are the ones that are most likely to have the scar. That one's got a something going on. Running a little slow. So interestingly, it's on the side where he's usually turned to the side. Um, so in most of the images, just conveniently hidden. Uh, not again. Doink. Sometimes if I close it and start it up again, that'll fix it. And sometimes not. Dum, dum, dum. Huh. Okay, so that's interesting. You can barely see it on that one. Barely see it on that one. See how the, um, it's over to the side. I just, I remember it more like down 
an in. It's almost like he's pointing at his mustache in some of these. Like, look how obvious it is in that one. I don't remember it that sideways. I, I remember it more... This one is closer. Let's see if this one will load. Nope. Even that one, I, I just remember it more down like that. Okay, so it turns out that even Mini-Me has the dang thing. Because that was the second thing I thought of. Well, does Mini-Me have it? Since they're supposed to be replicas. And Mini-Me does have it. And it's weird because Mini-Me is supposed to be a clone. So if you get an injury, your clone doesn't have the same injury. Because that injury is not supposed to be in your DNA. But you can kind of see it on there. Well, I'm back on Google. All right, let me try Yandex again. Mini-Me. So I looked it up on um, Wiki, and I did not see an, any storyline for it. It's it just kind of like this vague. All right, so let me find Mini Me. Can't really tell on that one. There, you can see there's there's something with the. Yeah, he's totally got it. He's got the exact same thing. I mean, it's just a stupid show, so, I mean, it doesn't have to make sense, but. So I looked up the scar on Wiki. Dun, dun, dun. We'll try it on Yandex here and see what happens. Oh, wait, that's Google. I screwed that up. Web. All right, the scar on his face is a reference to similar scars on early 20th century movie villains, such as several portrayed by Eric von Stroheim, as well as an homage to Donald Pleasance of Blofeld in You Only Live Twice. This type of scar is usually remnant of menzur fencing, an activity in which European students' groups participate. So fencing, you know, but um, it seems kind of like a weird... Scar for fencing because it's like this. So I'm like, you'd have to be like poked down there. And then uh, did mini me somehow do fencing and get the exact same scar? Um, and like I said, when you get cloned, there's no scar passing. So I don't know. That's just what I totally do not remember any scar on uh, Dr. Evil. And it's really obvious too. I mean, there's no way you're going to be watching that. Uh, that that show and then not notice that thing and it's hideous and his eye his eyebrows all fat and warped and phil Cantu remembers it oh so people are saying don't trust yandex because it's russian maybe in the two line in the in the current timeline the russians have a better search engine i don't know maybe the the russian search engine will show us everything that the american search engine doesn't want to show, show us moonlit illusion does not remember a scar mike farley does not remember a scar futuristic thinks it's suspicious It was more vertical to pinky. Yeah, I, I agree. It was more like this. Now it's like. Ugh. I can proudly say I never watched it. You know, other people watch TV over here. And so stuff gets on. And 
And then I mostly just search the internet, but sometimes I watch. That's funny. It's just like not hardly any of you watched it. You know, I hear about this all the time from people, just like random people. It was the funniest show ever and blah, blah, blah. And I watched it. I'm like, I, I guess I can see why guys like it, but it's not my deal. What is the deal here? Am I totally off center? I must have moved my computer a little bit. Ah, interesting. Okay, so not many people actually watch the show. You know, the thing is, I like, I, I saw part of it, and then I see their images on the, all the time, and I just am someone who notices those kind of things if you have, like, something weird about you. I was, I'm really not good at recognizing people, so anytime they have, like, one weird thing about them, I kind of clutch onto that, like, okay, you're the guy with that, so I'll always recognize you now. Um, from now on, like somebody has a giant mohawk, I'd love it. I'm like, just don't shave it because now I always can find that's the guy with the giant mohawk. That's the guy with the funky ear. That's the guy. I love that stuff because then I could totally recognize you. So there's just like no way I wouldn't notice that giant monster scar because from then on, from the first second I saw that, I would be like, that's the character with the big oogie scar. There's just no freaking way I would not clamp onto that thing. You ever notice so many of the, like, main people in the world have some creepy, weird thing about them, like a goofy haircut, a giant scar, a funky mustache? It's like, reality is like a campy movie. Do, do, do. Okay, well... Hey, I managed to talk for three hours. Not bad. Clone thing is nothing. It's a stupid show. Yeah, I already said that, but it looks like a lot of people don't remember the scar. I'm going to put it on retcon later and see uh, people remember the goofy scar. I was curious. Some, it's funny. Sometimes I'll put stuff on retcon and everybody like, nope. I get like no takers. And then I'll put it on here and like, 20 people are like, yeah, yeah, that's totally an ME. Um, and then sometimes it's the reverse, so. I mean, I watch a lot of movies and I kind of half watch them because I'll surf the internet and then I'll kind of watch it, but then I'll kind of. Most shows are just not that interesting enough to keep my whole attention. So either I surf the internet and kind of watch them or I'll do some busy work because I have sometimes I have to do busy work for for work like sorting things um, by color or something. So I'll sit there and I'll sort and I'll watch the show so that I don't get too bored just the show. There's very few shows that really have much of a plot line anymore or really worth my whole attention. I have a weird voice no matter how I try to make it sound normal. Yeah, see, I'd probably love that because I'm like, okay, that's that person with uh, the high-pitched voice or the gravelly voice or whatever. The minute you open your mouth, aha, I remember you. I love that stuff. I have, like, little nicknames in my head of how I, I just... Certain people walk a certain kind of weird walk, okay? I see that walk, I know it's them. All right, well, anyway, it is getting late. How did I remember to shut this thing off last time? <laughs> it's been a whole week. I can't remember. I have a lurch voice. Well, you have a deep voice. That's not bad. At least you don't have a high-pitched, squeaky voice. Oh, yeah, I totally don't remember how to shut this thing off. I don't think I've, I even thought of it until now again. Do, do. Man, it should be under manage, right? This stream can be assessed again. Exit will not end. Now, there was one 
that one was going to make it shut off. Exiting will not end stream. Nope. All right, so I think I have to go to the manage list. Manage. More actions. Ooh. Delete forever. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm really not loving the new YouTube. It says I can scroll, but it won't let me scroll. Good, off, public. Live. Oh, I'm back there again. Does anybody know how to turn off these live streams? Somebody's got to be able to do it. Last time, I think I went back to Classic, but I don't think Classic is there now. I got a notification earlier today. Do, do, you're going to be on here forever. What's this thing now? No. That doesn't do it. Live stream settings. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> That's the button. Oh, my God. I'm not the most visually observant sometimes with this stuff. Okay. Dum, dum, dum. And stream. Okay. So when I click this, this should do it. All right. So thanks for coming, everybody. Think good thoughts, everyone. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.